out. I'm in my studio. It's Monday afternoon and I'm working on a project that's really kind of fun and I thought I'd share it with you. As you may know or may remember, I have been making um, tons of cyanotype sun prints that I've been really, really crazy about. They're so much fun and you can be so creative with it with them, but um, then what? Then what do you do with them? So I have been making some art pieces and um, I'll show you a couple of those in a minute. But what I've been making that I really am loving are these little blocks. These really fun little blocks. Look at that little kitty cat. They are um, yeah, another way to show your cyanotype artwork. So um, here's one, um, this one I think is a three and a half inch by three and a half inch block. And these are two by two. And I'm having so much fun with them. So I wanted to just show you what I'm doing. Um, and, and you can go in so many different directions with this. So uh, this is just how I'm doing it. And um, let me show you what I got. Okay, so I picked up these uh, uh, three by three inch blocks. They're wood blocks. These, these sound a little hollow, whereas the smaller ones are solid wood, but it doesn't matter. They're really pretty cool. And, and I just happen to have a glaze that I had a navy glaze mixed up that was perfect to paint over these blocks just to, to change the color a little bit. So all of the pieces that I'm doing for my cyanotype series um, all got painted, got a coat of this uh, blue paint. Doesn't matter how nice and neat and tidy it is because we're gonna cover it up anyway, but it's just that that color is down there um, below. And I'm using my um, super heavy gloss gel, uh, just a gel medium to glue things down. And let me... I've always got a couple of ratty paint brushes around that are just for my gluing and they turn into some of my favorite brushes. So let's start with, I have two of them I'm gonna do here and I have a selection of all kinds of papers, not just cyanotypes, but I'm going to just put a coat of this on And I've already figured out a couple little things that I wanna add on just for the sake of the video going a little bit faster. Um, not a cyanotype paper, this is a um, scrapbooking paper, uh, but the colors were working for me and I just needed something to offset the cyanotype. And I take my little silicone scraper and make sure I work all my bubbles out Sometimes with these heavier papers, if you let them soak in water for a minute, they lay down a lot smoother and a lot easier. Now this is one of my cyanotypes that I cut a little house out of. And I'm gonna put that right over top. And um, taking, making sure that the paper below is laying flat. So you might wanna go through and lay your papers out and then come back for your second and third or multiple layers that you might be doing just to make sure everything gets, gets laid down and stays down and doesn't buckle. Um, the, most of the papers that I'm using here are, uh, most of cyanotypes are on watercolor paper. So it's a pretty heavy paper. It won't buckle quite as much. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit more gel to lay those papers down. I'm just checking to make sure it's all down. Okay, I like that one right there. I've used this orange color in a lot of the pieces that I've done so far. So this will go right along with the series. I'm just gonna wrap that right around there. Make sure that piece is on. Now I do have 
It's amazing how you have something and then all of a sudden it's just disappeared. I had a little number three. Okay, I'm gonna take this little number three from a playing card. Number three being, uh, the, represents creativity in numerology. So I'm gonna put that right there right by the house, making sure my papers are all still laying down flat because it's usually after they've been wet for a minute that they start to buckle. So you just got to go back and keep checking on it. And I think there's a couple little skinny pieces. I'm going to add just another little chunk right there. Jump over. I'm going to jump maybe on this back side. I have some really pretty maiden hair, maiden hair fern uh, leaves that I did a cyanotype with, and I love how delicate they are. Um, I'm never great at growing them and keeping them alive because they're so delicate, but I love how they turned out on this print. So definitely want to use that. Get it on there. And when I'm done with these, what I'll end up doing is um, I use a cold wax on them to get a really nice, to buff them out, get a really nice um, luster to them. This, the nice thing about working with watercolor paper is it's a little bit more durable, so you can actually pull it up and put it back down if you need to realign it. Okay, so we've got that one. Let's just leave that alone for a minute. I just had the idea to just cut that pocket out. Crazy as it might seem, I think it's gonna read better and it's gonna look a little bit more interesting. I know these are big giant scissors to be using for this delicate project, but um, they're my paper cutting scissors and they cut really nice and clean. So if I put that, maybe, let's see if it looks good on that. That could look pretty cool. I think I'm gonna do that. Let's see, do we want it on, get it on this side, or we can do it where it's more washed out. I like it more washed out. Maybe even, okay, I got a better idea. Turn this over, grab my pencil. Now, I kind of make these up as I go along. So um, I never have anything perfectly lined up. I have a general idea of what I want to put on here just because I'm doing a video. But I'm thinking, let's see, we could do that. And to pull this color in again, maybe that over that. I'm liking it. I'm liking this even better. Like that. Okay. That's where I'm going. So. Now this also is a heavy, heavy craft paper that has, um, that's been painted. Uh, it is an old wallpaper. I think I don't want that ragged edge right there at the very edge, so I'm going to trim that off. Sometimes it takes a lot of medium to get these heavier papers down.
Okay, so here I am back at my at my table later in the day. I took the dog for a walk in a park in the park while I was waiting for things to dry. And I think I've finished off uh, these cubes. Um, I'm really liking the way they turned out. They're pretty fun. I, I love them. I love having this surface to work on. So I'm gonna show you how I finish these off. Um, I take some, this is actually a uh, sanding cloth and it's a, a low grit. And I just kind of go on each of my corners and clean up the corners, take any ragged paper, ragged edges off, make sure I get all my corners. Smooth them out. Whoops. Wipe them off. And then what I like to do is I take a little bit of the navy blue and I just edge everything. It kind of integrates everything in and it follows along with my theme of cyanotypes. This color is just so perfect for it. And, and I'm not being really careful about it because um, I like that these are handmade pieces. I like them to look like handmade pieces, like pieces of art. So I'm not looking for perfection. And I have a little piece of gauze that I can go and wipe off anything that I feel like needs to be wiped off. And just continue on. So all the little seams at all the edges, um, any, any glue that's still showing, this is a great way to clean that all up. And I love working on projects like this. I love working on this surface. Um, it's pretty fun. It adds another dimension to my artwork, which I like. And I'm, I'm working on this whole series. And the title of this series is You're My Blue Sky, You're My Sunny Day. And it is um, the, the, title song from the Allman Allman Brothers from 1972 and it was a song that was really very has always been um part of my the soundtrack of my life I like to say and uh so I'd like to keep everything in this series about the blue about the cyanotypes um, the cyanotypes are created from the sunny sky, so that song fit right in. And that is, uh, that's pretty, pretty much it right there. I'm really liking the way that that turned out. And I hope I didn't do that off, off camera. Um, I should probably check and make sure. And then what I do is I use my polyurethane as a top coat. Um, actually, you know what I think I'm gonna do on these is I think I'm going to use, set that there. I think I'm gonna use the um, Dolan's Wax Medium, the cold wax. I like that too. So let me get a bristly brush. And you can do this a couple of different ways. You could, um, you could brush it on or you could take a, a cloth and, and uh, wax on, wax off. I'm gonna use a brush because I wanna get it into all the little nooks and crannies. And um, just work it into everything so I have a good coverage of wax on. Now, once you put the wax on, you really can't go back over it and uh, with a polyurethane um, because it won't stick to the waxy finish. So keep that in mind. Now, and, and the reason I'm using wax is when I did my cyanotypes originally, I did put a wax finish on them. So I don't want to go over them now with a, um, 
with a polyurethane. And, and I think these will turn out really nice. Now the small ones, I did put a, um, a polyurethane coat on them because they were mostly papers that I did paint. Like this paper here is a painted paper I made. Um, a lot of the papers are not cyanotype that have a wax finish on them. So um, I'd probably be fine doing, doing the polyurethane, but I think, just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna stick with the wax finish. And there you go. So um, that is how I'm doing these little blocks. And they are going to be part of the release, my cyanotype release that I do on December 1st. So if you um, wanna be in on that, you're gonna to need to subscribe. I'd love to have you subscribe. This one I'm gonna let dry before I continue on with it. But I love how each one of these ha tells a different little story. Um, in my mind it does anyway. So um, thanks for watching. Get some blocks. You could even take a chunk of wood and, and like a four by four and just chop it up if you have a saw to do that. Um, and, and make some heavy weight would be really nice as paperweights, great gifts as paperweights. Um, but it's just fun. It's another thing that's just fun to do. And it's another thing that, that I can do with all the cyanotypes that I'm making. Um, cause I'm probably not going to stop making those. And, um, it's just really fun. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next project. Thank you.